second there. Okay, so this session here is going to be kind of interesting. Um, I call this an MVP, Minimal Viable Prototype. I'm still working with it, and I'm going to just kind of take you through. So it's not a finished product. Uh, there's some stuff that I'm still trying to work on, and as we get into it, you'll you understand what I've been doing. And I'd like to leave some time for the end for suggestions and questions and comments, because, you know, uh, fortunately I was made a manager about a year ago, and I feel like I've lost some intelligence because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been out of the coding game for a year, and I just realized how much I've lost. So I kind of like to have your all's comments and... Wonderful to have a whole group of really smart people in the room to help me understand this. But let me get into why I did this, if, I'll, if it'll let me. Come on. There you go. This was at a job I worked at, and it was an HR. And on the uh, left-hand side, you see about six systems. Actually, there's nine HR systems. Uh, one was a COBOL mainframe. Anyone work with those? Yeah? Yeah? I know. And that was where all my personnel records were. And all the other systems did various things. Okay? Um, personnel management, talent management, performance management, all kinds of HR stuff. Basically, my whole job was with the HR information systems. I was supposed to be producing reports on our workforce. Who was hired, who was fired, um, who got performance ratings, all this stuff. And so what I would do is go to those different systems, have them export out text files, if I was lucky, I can get an Excel, Excel file out of them, most kind of a CSV file, pull it into Excel and Access, and then crunch those, and then spend about a week, seriously, a week, crunching all this, making the data clean, to produce reports, which by our personnel file, records were already two weeks behind, another week, I was three weeks behind. Okay, so very fast predictive analytics here. And then I had a smart idea, and this is when I knew I was really... Um, losing it. We put up a SharePoint site. That's all they let me use. They wouldn't let me use Drupal. We put up a SharePoint site, and I had people manually enter stuff in to help me with my predictive analytics, and basically put it in that crunch cycle there, and all I did was increase our time to two weeks. So I was like, okay, I'm sitting here like, this is, you know, and I've been in open source for a while. There's got to be an easier way. So this is why I came up with the concept. Oops, wrong way. Uh, you know, let's get some open source in there. Let's get this kind of more automated. Let's get these systems talking to each other. Because, you know, when you get APIs out and such, and the more longer that the workplace, but I'm thinking about trying to build an HR system that's more modern and more fit to what HR can do. So the reason I'm presenting this to you guys is this is kind of a generic platform where you can also use for other things other than HR. So, how many of y'all in here have heard of Headless Drupal or at least know the concept? Okay. How many of y'all know about Angular? JS? Okay, very good. How many of y'all know what R is? R, okay, perfect. A lot of folks didn't know what R is, but um, you, of course, have how many of y'all worked with R? Okay. So, I mean, love it, and it's just a great thing because we couldn't afford the SAS licenses. <laughs> so, I don't know. Is much better than SAS, but my, my boss wouldn't believe me. You know, they said, well, SAS, you know, this, this salesman told me it was really good. <laughs> anyway, that, that's what I want to deal with. Okay. So, how many of y'all heard of R Shiny? So, R, they, they introduced this, I don't know, a couple of years back or so. So, it's kind of a um, way of putting R onto the web. And it's like a little web server, and you can actually do interactive R pages on the web. And it's very, very nice to deal with. Any of y'all are members of the data group, uh, data meetup, data DC meetup? They had a great presentation a couple months ago about R Shiny. And you can essentially put R code in there, a little bit of JavaScript. Y'all familiar with D3? Okay, so you put a little D3 in there. And you can do some really nice interactive visualizations. So I'll show that in a little bit. But my idea was to take some headless Drupal. That would be where I'd keep my quantitative or basically my text heavy information, serve it out. Um, serve out some R here to kind of basically crunch the data for my for myself, and then have a custom built front end using Angular JS and the whole mean stack, and then I can produce reports a lot faster and with much more um, automation at the end to crunch the data and such. Okay, so that was my goal, and I I kind of got close to that, so I'll kind of explain more as I go through this. Oops, sorry. Oh, come on down. Come on. Oh no, brother. 
So this is what our shiny looks like. So on the left hand side you have basically the web page. And you can take a look here on the right hand side. This is the code. You essentially have two uh, files. There's the UIR, which basically shows you the user interface, and it's the one that builds the buttons that you can click and such, and it produces the graphs. And it's very interactive, you can do it in real time. And you can do some very complicated R analysis. Totally free, I would you know, recommend just downloading R. Any of y'all use R Studio? Real simple install, pulls it in, perfect. And then you got the, oops, the next file, server R, which essentially just captures your variables writes it in. It's not that hard of a language to learn. If you know R, you're pretty much there. And the rest of this gives you some nice HTML widgets that you can work with. So my original idea was, okay, I'll just use R Shiny, because it can handle JavaScript, it seems like. And we'll build it off that, and I'll have, a, I'll have what I want halfway there. So let me just show you a quick video. Now, the problem with it, though, is that R... Oh, let me get back to the R didn't really include all the JavaScript libraries I want. There are some limitations. And because I'm running it through the R server, which you can get a free uh, account on if you go on, online and just sign for a free account, it didn't give me the, the uh, what I wanted. So, but it did give me this, which is kind of a consolation prize. I can embed R into a Drupal site and let people play with it, and it works pretty fast. So you can have a Drupal site, if you have a little widget there, an R widget, you can put that in there and let people kind of play with the statistics, you know, play with the sliders and such. My management loved playing with sliders. Do you like an iframe? It is a very iframe, yeah. So I kind of cheated with that. I got a little frustrated. I said, okay, I don't give them this as much. But I'm, don't worry, I'm going to try to go further than that. <laughs> but this is kind of like if you need to do something real quick and fast, you can embed that into your site and serve it out. It works out. So, you know, to do all that right there, what you need to do is just install R, R Shiny, I mean, R Studio, um, Shiny Dependencies, there's dev tools, I would recommend getting that. Get a free account on shinyapps.io. And you can see, like you asked, we've got the NV API, and then there's NV iframe. And the reason I like to use the NV iframe is that I can give it its own theme, so I can make it look, look a little bit better. Although, how many of y'all have tried to theme things using iframe in Drupal? <laughs> it's tough. I remember a couple of years ago when I gave a talk about using BERT. Anyone here use BERT, Business Intelligence Reporting Tools? I used an iframe for that in Drupal, and it kind of worked, but it didn't give me what I wanted. But it gave me a little bit of JavaScript there to work with that. So I've been kind of trying to work out Drupal as an analytics platform for a while here. So I'm holding out real hope for Drupal 8, because Drupal 7 and Drupal 6 have been driving me crazy on this. You know, I don't think it's built for the kind of analytics I want, so that's why I'm going to try to do this. Okay. So, as the cat said, this is inadequate, okay? I mean, yeah, doing an iframe with R Shiny is kind of cheating, isn't it? It's kind of nice. You can kind of, you know, get your users happy with it, but I wanted to go further because I wanted to go back to my concept. I remember the original concept. So what I did is I found out about something called OpenCPU. Anyone use that? Okay, so some of you have heard of R Shiny. You use OpenCPU? Great. What do you use it for? Um, analysis tools. Analysis tools? Okay. And how did you learn about that? Through just basically searching. searching. That's pretty much what I did. The thing is you have to have your, your function, like geometry, and then a box, and then your variables all passed on URL. Mm -hmm. You can use a curl command to execute. Right. And that's, yeah, it's a great API. And, you know, there's some good documentation about that. And from what I read, I mean, it was someone's doctoral dissertation, and they've released it out there. So it's a great environment to work with. And what I like about it is that it gives you both the R integration you want and the JavaScript integration. And so far, all the JavaScript I've thrown at it, it can handle. So it can use the Angular, it can use the, you know, I haven't gotten the whole mean stack in there. Because i got to set it up in the Ubuntu environment. The way I'm using it right now, OpenCPU, is you can just open up in R Studio, download it. And you can run it off a Windows machine. But um, I set up a Google, and I'll talk about that in a second, of allowing it to run in that. So we have the R server on it, or the OpenCPU server running on its own, and then get Node to run on its own. And I would show that, except I kept exploding the Node server. I don't know what I was doing wrong. But learning. Okay. <laughs> so the nice thing about this uh, OpenCPU I like about it is that you can 
you know, there's a public cloud version you can use. You can download it yourself. You can use it. It's very simple to use. It handles continuous integration. It's got a really nice security model. So it's pretty, it's pretty robust server. And let me show you, and this is just kind of off the R Studio. Hang on just a second. What I was able to do that. So this is a custom front end. It's just the basic. Um, they have an app demo. I just took the file, kind of played around with it a little bit. So I have a feeding. An Angular script is inside. Very, very basic Angular script. Nothing big. And also having R at the same time. So as you can see here, you click on that, and you see the you know the changes down there. And then a very simple form that basically tells me what version of R I'm running. So hello, Bill. This is R. And that's what it kind of my uh, minimal viable prototype of that. And then I've been playing it a little bit last night, taking some more stuff, kind of through a you know, deep read through it. So I didn't record out here, but just can run those kind of scripts. Okay. So what we have here is a, essentially a front end there. Custom, and then we have R on the background and Angular into that. And that's kind of closer to my vision that I want. And if you want to install that for yourself, you can install a personal version to work with through R Studio. Just install that package. It just takes a few minutes to really get this in there and work with it. If you want to have uh, the server, just go through Ubuntu. And I just did a dual boot on one of my servers, uh, one of my laptops lying around. And install it, put it in there. This, this is really easy to set up. It's one of the easiest servers I think I've worked with. And very good documentation. The server manual PDF is really good to work with. Okay. And they have some really good example apps. And the one I would recommend going to is App Demo and downloading that. And again, it's real simple. You can download it through R Studio. One thing I found with this that they didn't really mention in the documentation, make sure you have R server if you're going to do the open CPU server and also have R server with that. And if you're going to do any kind of fancy R stuff beyond just the basic um, packages, make sure you have those packages installed on R server. Okay? So, like, if you, you all know, like, ggplot and all those. And if you do anything like Rattle, anyone work with Rattle? Which is more of a predictive analytics thing in R. I was trying to do some rattle stuff and it didn't work for me until I had to actually put it on the package. So when you install it, it explodes out for you. And as you can see here, you get a nice WW folder. And how about I just took the hello and just kind of rewrote that a fellow Angular JS? Really simple to work with, and I'm still kind of building onto that. So this was the revised concept. So I basically hit where I wanted. I got Angular JS in there. Open CPU worked for me. Got R working for my for me. Put some other JavaScript libraries in there. Did some HTML5, CSS3. All the stuff was working for me. So it's a big one here. How about the headless Drupal? Okay. Anyone here work with headless Drupal? Done anything with it? Okay. So what version of Drupal do you use? Oh, we use seven. Seven. Okay. And this is probably where I'll ask you some questions on this. This is where I was having some issues myself with it, trying to get the rest, you know, services. Yes. So here's what I went with, and I may have gone the wrong path. Yeah, it was so close for me. So we know the concept here, how that works. Nice diagram for it. So I, I of course, put an Angular JS module. Is that what you guys use? No. So, you know, love that module, and then I found this one, Angular Drupal. Okay, and did you get, were you able to get that to work for you? This one, I actually ran to him at a Drupal meetup. Oh, okay, so Tyler, Tyler Frankenstein here is in town? Uh, yeah. Oh, cool, okay. As I wrote to him, I had a couple of questions about that. And uh, my thing was that I was not even getting error codes. I was getting nothing on the end. I don't understand what I was doing. So it might be just me not knowing enough about Angular to work with this. But that's what I was taking so far. But what really attracted me to the Angular group is that the comment, the file, the node system, all those things I could come out and use would also come out as JSON files, which was perfect for what I wanted to do with CHR system. And Again, I was trying to use a simple application that he mentioned. That's me over there, keep going. Because I just kept trying to make this work and work, and it just was not building it for me. So I got everything I wanted, but not that. So 
this is what I'm looking at in next steps here. So again, try to work on my knowledge of Android JS. I realize I need to do that more. <laughs> but also replacing Drupal 7 with Drupal 8 because it seems like it works better. So you folks that use um, REST services, which one do you find works better? Drupal 7 or Drupal 8? Drupal 8 REST test. Okay. Drupal 7 is better since more and more Works fine? Okay. But I've heard good things about the RESTful module. I like the REST WS. Mm -hmm. That's one I have. Okay. Yeah, I, I was having some trouble with the service module still, so it might be my install, too. Could be. Because I use BitNami and I use their stuff. So I might I may have to switch to something else. Okay. Because yeah, I want to be able to write back and forth. I want to make sure I have a custom interface. Because you can see here, some other applications I want to try to do is with WordPress, Alfresco, Salesforce. We were having a Salesforce coming in, and I heard a lot of folks use AnglerJS for that. And I like the idea because any of y'all work with Salesforce? So how many of y'all like the user interface? Yeah, I know. It took a lot. We were doing a processing, an HR processing system through that. And more of the training was just getting people used to the interface and actually what it was doing. Find a more interesting interface for it. And then I found out about Deploy R. Anyone work with Deploy R? Anyone even heard of it? I found out about this on Monday because I was at a Salesforce meeting, oddly enough, on Saturday, and someone said, Oh, I found this. And it's another way of packaging R applications. And the idea here is that you have your R applications and there's an R broker, and they can drop into your JavaScript. So it's interesting to me now that you have three basic ways of getting R through here. And if you work with R, you know that Microsoft bought, uh, I think it was the Revolution Analytics. So they had R Studio. So there's a lot of space, a lot of movement in the R space, pulling that in. So now you've got three different companies offering ways of integrating R into JavaScript into your applications. And this one with Deploy R is actually talking about doing with mobile applications, which makes a lot of sense because on the mobile HR. So I kind of went through this faster than expected, but that's all right. Um, so I need to move this down to that faster. I think I have my foot in this side for you. Uh, any questions, comments so far on this? Yes, sir. This may be a dumb question, but what do you need to use the Drupal part for? The reason why I want to use the Drupal part um, is to, because I, I like the way I can set up a nice backend on it. And I can have you know, like a form processing and such. I, I just, to me, it's more of a familiar environment so that I can build the form processing and have the groups in there. And I've built, uh, used new Drupal before as a knowledge management system. So in a lot of cases, I'm going to like people co collaborate with each other and pass information. So I make sure I'm going to have text heavy files, personnel files and such. And I want to be able to have them work with us and have it, and have it come served out like that. Um, so along those lines, uh, there are a lot of CMS platforms that um, started 